I'm gonna dress my baby like a vampire next week on Halloween. Got a lot of things down at the Walmart, things like trampolines. I got me some whiskey and some diapers for my darling Lucy Jean. Yes, I'm a ballerina, ballerina, ballerina on the lamb. Yes, I'm a ballerina, ballerina, ballerina on the lamb. We got married in a walk. Good morning. How's everyone doing? Uh, we met new coffee today. It's uh getting right into it. We got new coffee and it's supposed to be strong coffee. Tastes terrible. But I probably did a terrible uh, mixture. I did a bad job, Katie. Uh, anyway, good morning. This is the morning show. I talk about uh, I talk about uh, what John Boy Media is doing today. I talk about geography. I talk about history. I talk about the weather. I talk about a baseball player and talk about books. It's for me. It's not for you. But if you enjoy it, I like that too. Been doing it for about a month now. Uh, I like it. So good morning. Good morning to Apple Joe Film. Good morning to Ryan Bayaki. Good morning to uh, Marie Moss, Danny Casserly, Trip Garbin. Someone in the in the Periscope said books. Yep. Talk about books. Talk about books. Uh, what's going on? Black Rifle Coffee. No, I like black. I had Black Rifle Coffee once, and I liked it. I made uh, I made cold brew out of it. This is uh, Dunkin' Donuts is good coffee if you don't actually like the effect of being woken up by coffee, just like water. All right, I'll drink this, but it's not good. Anyway, happy Friday. It's felt like Friday for so long for me. Wednesday felt like Friday. This is the Friday slate for John Boy Media. Okay, how about you work, keyboard? Quit being a dickhead. <clears throat> Here we go. We got a talking baseball episode out today. It is awesome. We had an umpire on, umpire for 30 years, Dale Scott, and we could have talked to him forever. So many stories. He was part of the Joey Bats bat flip game, and then he was on the field for when Odor punched Joey in the face. He was part of the umpire crew for both of those games, which is crazy. 2001 World Series when uh, Bush threw out the first pitch. And they had to put um, a Secret Service agent in bodyguard disguised as an umpire on the field. He was part of that crew. He was he had Billy Martin Billy Martin threw dirt on him. I mean, I don't want to like give you all the stories, but endless stories, awesome point of view. I loved our conversation with that dude. Um, so go listen to that on Talking Baseball. Talking Yanks comes out today. We had Meredith Morakovich on it, sideline reporter. Um, and Meredith is like super nice and always a blast. And we had a fun conversation with her. Uh, talking Giants. Bobby's in the Periscope chat. Bobby, what did you talk about on Talking Giants today? Uh, DeAndre Baker still getting in trouble. Anthony Thomas and Danny King. Anthony Thomas and Danny are back. Danny and Bobby recap the rest of the NFC East draft classes and go through Giants stories for the first half of the show. Then Justin and Anthony take the second half of the show and talk about Patrick Graham's defense. Okay. That's Talking Giants. What we're listening to, Talking Folk has a what we're listening to, and it is it's Happy Memorial Day weekend. I'm getting, I'm, I bet they got some good vibes on this show. California Honey Drops. New Phoebe Bridger song came out today, so I'll have that on repeat all day. Oh, my God. Uh, John Boy and Jake TV today is the craziest show if you want to go watch jake and i with our jaw drop for 20 minutes straight go watch the watching threes a crowd today just an insane show uh we didn't we like didn't have any commentary it was it the premise and then and then go watch it is uh they get a man out and it's like 1979 and then they bring out his secretary and then they bring out his wife and they do a who knows him better the secretary or wife but the fucking first question they asked was, when it comes to sex with your secretary, are you holding back or letting go? So the opening question was, are you cheating on your wife with your secretary? And then they have the, and then they have the secretary 
guess his answer and then they have the wife guess his answer so the wife's like absolutely he's not been having sex with the secretary and then the secretary's like actually it's a yes chaos and it's craziest show it had to lead to so many divorces the one dude is just in the middle of his wife and his secretary all the time like why did who signed us up for this uh it's pretty funny it is crazy so and then we got what do we got watching baseball as well uh 2000 Seven tiebreaker game, I believe. Yeah. Kate, Caitlin says yes, 2007. So anyway, that's everything we got coming out on the channel today. And I'm going to make it. Oh, look at that. Made them small. Now the weather, we're going all the way to Hawaii. We're going to Waimea. 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 Waimea Bay. It's 2 a.m., 3 a.m. there, and it's 75 degrees, some clouds, mostly sunny in Hawaii. Why may I? Now, I always go, whenever we land on the random town, I always go, like, look at some videos from the town, and I got so lost in why may I, why may I, why may I, why may I, I think it's why may I found it. Waimea, I got so lost in Waimea Bay. And I am going to share that lostness with you because it is crazy. So they have first, okay, so they they have a bay and a river, right? And they connect the two. So you see this trench they're digging, digging? And anyone that listens on just the podcast app, I'll try to describe it. But basically, there's a bay, river type thing, and the ocean. And there's a bunch of dudes with shovels, like, you know, digging a canal to connect the two. Because when the tide gets high, it starts flowing, and it starts flowing, and then they surf it, the river. And I just watched these videos for like an hour last night of these dudes surfing the river and this, and like it gets so wide. So here is the aerial uh, shot of the ocean. And then you can see like the river and then the river kind of, it overflows and it spills and then they connect it and that's what they surf. And then, okay, this went so, I was watching this for so long last night because it's insane. Um, so they surf the river. Also, this is like North Shore where Pipeline is and all the biggest waves. So uh, if you like, they were saying if you surf the river and then when the river takes you out into the ocean and there's shore break, you just get slaughtered into the giant waves that are crashing on top of you. So anyway, then there's this dude named Jamie O'Brien. Shout out his channel, I guess. He's doing pretty well. He's got half a million subscribers. And he's, uh, I'm guessing, a pro surfer. And he's just ripping up. Ripping up the river. Crazy. I didn't really, I was, I mean, I've seen like people surf rivers before, but I've never seen them dig a canal to connect a river and the ocean and then surf that. But yeah, yeah. So I got lost in this. So you guys can go get lost in this if you want. Pretty cool. Oh, and then check out the beach. So then I was like, all right, what else does this place have? So this is the bay, right? You can see it here on the screen. It's a small little beach. Here's the river. There's the, where they connect it right there. And then down here, there's a rock. And that rock is just a giant hangout where people can jump off into the ocean. It also has huge waves. So this beach, Waimea Beach, is basically the coolest beach ever. It's just like the biggest playground. You can surf the river, you can surf the ocean, you can jump off a rock into the water. It looks pretty pretty. So, shout out to Waimea Bay, Hawaii. What's the temperature? I forget. Uh, 75 and sunny, I think it was. All right, so 
I got super lost in that. And then we'll move on to our, our, our baseball player. Our baseball player today is Jack Quinn. And Jack Quinn, just like a brief overview, played from 1909 to 1933. That's 23 years. Dude played 23 years. He was a pitcher. And apparently he was a huge mystery. He played for the Yankees. He played for, it looks like, the Braves, the White Sox, the Red Sox, the Phillies, Brooklyn, and Cincinnati. Um, This dude, I was doing some research, just reading up. All right, Jack Quinn, you're the random baseball player of the day. What do we got in you? And then I see that he played his last game at age 50. I'm like, damn, dude was pitching games at age 50. Says he pitched 14 games. He led the league in saves twice with 13 and 9. Uh, so that's great. Good job by him. He was a man of mystery. Even at his time, people had no idea how old he was. It says... It was popular uh, topic of speculation among baseball writers as Quinn was getting along in ear, years. Many were of the opinion that he was at least three or four years older than the age given in most record books. Quinn, when asked about his age, said, I'll tell you my age when I quit. Nobody's going to know before that. And then he quit and he still never told anyone his age. He said, uh, I'm old enough. There's no argument. But why confine me to the boneyard before my time? Yeah, right? If I can find me to the boneyard before my time. So no one knew how old he was. No one knew his real name because it wasn't Jack Quinn. They knew enough that it wasn't Jack Quinn. And that I think he said it's not Jack Quinn. So no one knew his real name and no one knew his ethnicity. And that was another big cause of speculation. Uh, it said that in order to surmise why some thought Quinn was Indian, I know first it says that the New York Times wrote that Quinn was a Welshman, a Pole, an Irishman, and an Indian, among other things, a Greek, a Slavic, and French. So they just had no idea this dude's age, name, or where he was from. But he played baseball and he pitched. It's insane. Well, it's kind of weird. And then they said, uh, in order to surmise why some thought Quinn was Indian, there's actually a funny story behind it. He was silent. Like, he would not have conversation. DJ LeMayhew asked, um... And he was out at the billiards bar with some Yankee players, and he was just uh, standing there, unmoving in the darkness. And they debated, and they were drunk, and they were looking like, who is that? They debated whether it was Jack Quinn or a cigar store wooden Indian. And then they said, nah, I went over and talked to him. He didn't say anything back. He didn't say a single word. That must be Quinn. And then because of this incident, some of his teammates began referring to Quinn as the Wooden Indian. Which, you know, in given times, not a cool nickname, but back in the day, that's kind of a cool nickname, the Wooden Indian. Uh, perhaps some eavesdropping scribe thought they meant Quinn was Native American ancestry, and the story spread. So a dumb nickname from a dumb joke turns into a newspaper writer saying he's Native American. How did anything get reported back in the day and people just read it? Um, at one point, this dude, Jack Quinn was pitching on the mound. He didn't like the umpire's call. So he took his glove and just threw it at the umpire, which, you know, I'd like to see that again. He got ejected and then everyone protested that he got, <laughs> that he got ejected. <laughs> like <laughs> imagine not ejecting a guy who throws his glove at you kind of have to, um, I can show you his, his player page. There's just, it's a lot. Uh, but yeah, he, he led the league in games finished twice. And in those times he led the league in saves, which is that retroactive? Did they didn't like, I mean, 1931, they weren't like, that's a save. You know, I don't know. But uh, let's see. 23 years means he's got to have faced some Hall of Famers. So that's what I'm going to go look at. Let's go see, like, you know, did he, he had to face Babe Ruth a bunch. Come on, internet. We're going to go see if he faced how his numbers fared against Hall of Famers. Um, Babe Ruth, 131 
plate appearances. Make this bigger for you guys that are watching. Babe Ruth, 131 plate appearances, seven home runs, a 934 OPS, a 392 on base percentage. He walked Babe Ruth 20 times. Then Tris Speaker also lit him up. All right, let's see. We're going to make the cutoff 20 plate appearances versus Hall of Famers. Let's see. 20 plate appearances so we can see if there's a Hall of Famer that he owned. Okay. Looks like he was pretty good against Herb Pennock. No, don't tell me. You guys are going to get upset with me that I don't recognize the name Herb Pennock? Is Herb a pitcher? Because then no one cares. Yes. No one cares. What about Stan Kowalski? It's a cool name. Stan Kowalski. I'm trying to find a Hall of Famer that he dominated. Stan Kowalski, also a pitcher. This may be tougher. May be tougher than we want. Ted Lyons. That's a good name. Red Faber. Oh, Tony Laz. There we go. Tony Laz. Hall of Famer. Tony Laz. Dude sucked against our guy. Jack Quinn, the Wooden Indian. Uh, 56 plate appearances, only 11 hits. 232 on base percentage, 515 OPS. Take that, Tony Laz. I like Tony Laz better than Jack Quinn, but not in this moment. Harry Hooper, that's a cool name. Harry Hooper. Harry Hooper, the Hall of Famer. Who's Harry Hooper? Is his name Henry Hooper? Henry Bartholomew Hooper. Full name. Um, Henry Bartholomew Hooper. Weird ass hat. Brimless hat. Isn't that all the new rage right now? The Yankee hat without a brim? Well, Henry Hooper was doing it. Nickname Hoop. That makes sense. Hoop. It's a cool nickname. Hall of Famer, four-time World Series champion for the Red Sox and the White Sox. Led the league in plate appearances and sacrifice hits in 1910. Go get it, Hoop. All right. Anyone? Uh, I could, my laptop went to sleep, and everyone knows that, you know, can't move on to the next thing. That's all I had to say about that. Bam. Uh, All right, that was Henry Hooper. And now we're moving on to uh, book, book time. Someone was was very excited about this. I've been talking books for a a month on this thing. I got this book, right? And I'll tell you a little story about this book. It's by Robert Polito. And it's just a book of poems and stories. And I read one of this dude's poems in The New Yorker and immediately bought his most recent book, but I believe the poem that I liked in the New Yorker wasn't in the book and I didn't like the book. I didn't find anything in the book that was nearly close to the poem I liked in the New Yorker. The poem I like in the New Yorker, I like so much. I basically have it memorized. It's very short. Um, So I will just show you this one and you can get it if you want. A lot of people were excited that I talked about a fan's notes. I still have it on my desk, a fan's notes yesterday. Had a couple of people like, damn. Because people like that book. That's why. That's why. Um, but there's this poem in the New Yorker, and I'm going to I can just throw it on the screen for you guys. And then I'll read it for the people that just listen to the podcast app. Um, dude, I love this poem uh, a whole bunch. It's really short. Um The ending is really good. And if anyone is just joining and like poetry, ah, they're bite-sized stories. That's what I've been saying from the start. They get such a bad rap for no reason. Just bite-sized stories. Everyone likes them. Um, All right. This is the poem by uh, Robert Polito that I read in The New Yorker. It's called Your Call. It goes like this. My mother worked the tilt-a-whirl at the Jefferson County Carnival. 
or so someone said. The rock ribbled base of generators underneath the Kalit, Kalit, ah, oh, Kalit. Katie, how's that? Calipio? I can't pronounce this word. I never can. <laughs> like the clown music. Fuck. I blew it. Anyway, underneath the Calipio tooting goodbye crew world, over carpet clowns, spec girls, and an armless knife throwing. What? Calliope. I knew I was saying it wrong. Under the Calliope tooting crew, goodbye crew world, over carpet clowns, spec girls, and an armless knife thrower retreating to his tent between shows. I mean, the first half of that poem is pretty simple. His, his mom works at the carnival, the tilt a whirl. I mean, the tilt a whirl is one of those things in like America, uh, like Americana, uh, you know, like Bruce. Bruce, if he wants to describe a summer or a boardwalk, he's going to use tilt a whirl. If Gaslight Anthem wants to do the same thing, they're going to use tilt a whirl. Tilt a whirl is like a nostalgia piece, you know, like the Ferris wheel and the tilt a whirl. Like people use that to when you want to like talk about what Disneyland Main Street represents, like that old good time at the summer fun, tilt a whirl. It's a very common u- use in, in stories and poems that want to evoke that sense of um, childhood memory. So anyway, talking about his mom works at the carnival and there's all this crazy shit going on. There's all these crazy sounds. It's like a whole mess. And then he says, let the people point and stare at me. And then this is the passage I really like. From, from home to the edge of town is a bike ride or the shoot me out of a cannon trip of a lifetime. Your call. From home to the edge of town is a bike ride or the shoot me out of a cannon trip of a lifetime. Your call. And boom. That's, I love that. It's basically just saying like, make your own adventures. You want to enter, you want to be entertained. You want to live an exciting life. Just do it. You can uh, turn anything into an adventure. Um, that's at least what I get from it. But I enjoy a bike ride or the shoot me out of a cannon trip of a lifetime. Your call. It's up to you. Um, if you have to explain the poem while reading it, it's a sucky poem, says Los Angeles Lakers. Well, I mean, like, that's the whole thing, dude. I'm explaining what I like about things. I'm explaining the poem. That's like the whole, when you like, you know, that's like, that's like, (laughs) that's like saying like, if you have to talk about the baseball game afterwards, must've been a shitty game. No, dude, that's the whole format of what we're doing here. If you have to talk about the movie after the movie, must've been a shitty movie. No, dude, this movie podcast. I like, that's the whole thing. You know what I mean? And people, yeah, yeah. People write and create. So people talk about it anyway. Um, from home to the edge of town is a bike ride or the shoot me out of a cannon trip of a lifetime. Your call. Love it. Put it on my wall somewhere. Good job, Robert Pulido. I'm sorry I didn't like your book, though. I'm sorry I didn't like your book. Um, but maybe there's others that I like. Josh Thevian says, Morning, Jimmy. Hope you have a good Memorial Day. Hope your family stay safe. Thank you, Josh. I hope the same to you i hope the same to you uh abe abe's late today abe just logged on anyway yeah happy friday everyone i'm going down the shore gonna hang, gonna see my brother there are entire youtube channels dedicated to trying to interpret star wars oh yeah yeah there's no there's no reason to really whatever I'm going to drink just another sip of my coffee. See, anyone got any questions before we uh, get out of here and start the weekend? You should review a Choose Your Own Adventure book. We watched the Choose Your Own Adventure Kimmy Schmidt series. It's funny. Tell us more about books you like. That's the whole end of the show. I can't do another one because eventually I'm going to run out. And then, you know, I just have like stacks of books behind my desk. That's what I'm looking at. But I just grab one every morning and just talk a little bit about it. My dad was real good at making anything into an adventure when we were little kids. We still does that for his grandkids. But like, if we were going to, oh, okay. So that's what that poem reminds me of. Like it, when we would drive to my hockey games every day or whatever, my dad knew there was 10 streetlights. So 
before we got in the car, he had to bet. He had to guess how many were going to be green, and I had to guess how many were going to be green. And then every streetlight, you know, what's it going to be? What's it going to be? And then like, okay, there's one for you, one for me, blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, until the next uh, light, I'm just sitting there like an eight-year-old kid, like, oh, I hope, what is it going to be? What is it going to be? Like peeking around the corner. It's some Dan adventure when it finally comes into sight. And you're like, it's red. Uh, that's what that poem reminds me of. My dad used to do that shit all the time. Anytime we'd come home, guess who? Guess it, is mom's car going to be in the driveway or is it going to be in the garage? Everyone place your bets. And then me and my sister would place our bets. Uh, nonstop stuff like that. If we got McDonald's and he thought that, uh, you know, we were eating dinner soon and he thought my mom would have been upset that we got McDonald's, it was like, a, make sure your teeth are clean. Let's throw it out. And we like scurry around the side of the house and throw it out, then go in. But I'm sure my mom didn't even care. He was just making everything an adventure, uh, which is which was fun. All right. Do we have any questions? I'll play this song again. And then I'm not going to be doing this on Monday. I'll be back on Tuesday. Uh, I like chicken tenders. That's cool. Those are good. What will you be listening to on the way to the shore? Mm. I don't know. Podcast. I don't like listening to oh, podcasts unless the new Phoebe Bridger song on, on repeat. Uh... Silver Screen Fiend by Patton Oswalt. That'd be interesting to me. I like Patton and I like movie history and stuff like that. TV history. Anything you miss about Australia? Man, I haven't been back. I, I left Australia when I was 10. Uh, I just want to go see the town I lived in and see if I recognize it. If I can still navigate it. Um... There's entire university degrees and careers dedicated to explaining poems and identifying its elements. L.A. Lakers must be used to Dr. Seuss poems, says Detroit Blabber. Yeah, I mean, I was going to say, like, you know, to to think you can't talk about it is a weird move. It's a weird move. Um, Cool. All right. I'm out. I'm done. I'll see you guys on Tuesday. We got more lined up. But, uh... Go check out the interview with Dale Scott. If you're into baseball, go check out the uh, the threes, the watching, what was it, watching threes a crowd. I'm telling you, it's insane. It should, if you don't want to watch the version of Jake and I watching it, just go watch the original version. It's an it's insane show. The opening question was, do you cheat on your wife? And then they bring the wife out, and then they say, all right, we asked your husband's if they've had sex with their secretary, what do you think they said? And the wives are like, fucking hope no. <laughs> and, then the, and then they're like, okay, we asked the secretary. And the secretary's like, he has. <laughs> like, what? It's brutal. It's terrible. Um, it was captivating, and our jaws were dropped the entire time. See you guys. Uh, I'll be back on Tuesday, and then, you know, Tuesday through Friday. Uh, weather, a town. A book, history, uh, a baseball player, Jack Quinn, most mysterious player. See you guys.